Hi everybody, how are you? I'm so happy it's the Friday before the long 4th of July weekend. So I thought we'd take a little break from um, heavier things and go into make a light summer salad. Okay, so this is a Mediterranean summer salad. And when we say Mediterranean, I like to think of that as sort of like Italian, Greek, you know, all those good flavors. Um, from those regions, they're very close together, uh, bordering the, what is it, the Mediterranean Sea? Mediterranean Sea. Um, so, okay, so as I move into summertime, and I realize it's all, we're already, in, it's July 1, um, I go, my food, my salads get lighter and lighter and lighter, but I'm not quite there yet to make a really light salad, so we're gonna make a pasta salad. That way you get a little bit of stick to your ribs, food, as well as, you know, vegetables and fruits and things. So, here we go. It's also a classic picnic dish yes, for this, this weekend. A, yes, it's perfect for the weekend. So I, because I'm complicated, <laughs> um, I am going to use two different kinds of pasta. Okay, we're going to use the medium shell and we're going to use the corkscrew, celatani. So I like two different kinds of pasta. This salad. Do they and, have two different cooking times? Yes. Celatani to get al dente, which means to the tooth, not squishy and bloated and too soft. That means it has a little bit of a bite to it. Uh, so that is 11 to 12 minutes. So let me turn my water back up. I think it is boiling. Um, so I'm going to put these in first for like two minutes or possibly three minutes. And then I'm going to put in the shells because they only take eight to nine minutes. So you have to do a little bit of math, set a little timer. It's not that hard. Um, but I do like different textures. And as we move through all of this salad, it's a cold salad, which means essentially means room temperature salad. Um, there's not a lot of cooking. It's all going to meld together the natural flavors. But you'll see all the different types of flavors but you'll also see the different types of textures. So with salads in general, it just feels so nice, the mouthfeel to be able to eat different textures, like crunchy things, soft things, medium things, leafy things, salty things, you know, all the different things. So we're gonna do that. Oops, not quite ready. It'll be ready soon. We'll get that in the pan. So we're gonna start. So there's lots of ingredients. So I don't wanna rush through this because since it's a cold salad, not a lot of cooking to be done, we can take our time, okay? So we're gonna do some of the things that take the longest first. All right, so this is spinach. And now they say on these packages that they'll say sometimes thoroughly washed and ready to enjoy. Sometimes they'll say double washed or triple washed. I don't believe them. Okay, that's just me. <laughs> I never believe anybody when it comes to cleaning food. So what I like to do is just take my handy dandy salad spinner right here and check my spinach as I put it in there. And this is an old fashioned term, what I'm gonna say now. A lot of people don't do this. But I used to work for a German restaurant and um, the owners, the first owner's wife used to run the salad area and trained me, but um, uh, she was very, very picky about how you clean spinach. Cleaning spinach actually means taking the stem off. Because how many times have you eaten um, a bowl full of salad with spinach or baby greens in it and like all these stems are stuck on your knife? Or sometimes you can't get them in your mouth with your fork because you got stems everywhere. So the old fashioned way is to clean all these stems off, okay? So I'm gonna clean a few just to show you. You just pick them up and you just rip them off, easy peasy. If you don't have the time to do that, that's fine. Um, I like, it doesn't bother me, just relaxes me, makes me go through the, each piece of lettuce or spinach and I get over really fast whenever I'm by myself and I'm not making a video. So, but today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna like loosely pick out some of the bigger stems. Like for example, this one is a big piece of spinach. And it has a very big, awkward stem. Okay, stems you can eat. 
there's no problem with it. Like I said, it's just all about your pickiness. You know, like how much do you really want that stem in there? Most, a lot of people today don't care. You know, I'm in the middle. Sometimes I care, sometimes I don't care. Like that's a great big stem right there. That's like an inch, over an inch long, you know? So, I don't know, Patrick, do you like stems? Sometimes they, yeah. you know, if they're not too noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's called, when they say, if you go into this industry and they say, we need you to clean the spinach, that's what it means. It doesn't mean washing the spinach necessarily. It means taking the stems off. So I never knew that before. I'm like, what, she wants me to wash all the spinach? No, it means take the stems off. Now, I'm not going to take the rest off, but I did want to show that to you. Because this dish, so look at that big piece of spinach. That's the weird thing about spinach, right? So sometimes you get little pieces, thinner pieces, heavier, coarser pieces. So I'm going to take the stem off this one, but I'm also going to do this little tear. I'm just going to tear it in half or in chunks. Throw that in there. So also while I'm emptying this into the... Bin. I look for anything bad because sometimes with lettuce it just happens they go through machines these days they're like spun through these machines and sometimes a little bit of old lettuce is missed and you might there might be right in the middle of this beautiful glorious bunch of spinach there might be like one slimy piece of spinach and that one slimy piece of spinach is going to contaminate all the other spinach so you need to like you know keep an eye out for those types of things. You also need to, um, when you pick out your spinach or your lettuce or your produce from the grocery store or from the market or even from the um, open air market, the farmer's market, you need to look at it, okay? Don't just assume everything's okay. Shake it up a little bit, look at it, okay? In the farmer's market or any organic produce, you might wanna look for slugs and bugs because they do exist, okay? So I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna keep this container here, this thin little plastic spinach container, because that is the perfect little um, garbage pan on your table. It's nice to have a garbage pan on your table rather than um, having to always go to the waste basket. So my salad spinner's full, so I'm gonna run water on that while we're doing the pasta for a minute, and then we're gonna strain it out from the water, dump it out, Fill it back up again. We're going to do that two times and then we're going to spin it. Okay. Easy peasy. Okay. Now, I'm going to get my mix because I can hear my water is boiling. Remember, hot things look cool. So here's my water pot boiling up the side. You don't need to see the pan on this one because it's not a big deal. It's uh, I'm going to do two minutes with the Celatani. We're only going to do half a box because we're going to do another half of the box with the other one. Now here's a trick too. If you're not, if you, I don't know if you've ever had mice. Um, we had one mouse in our house, okay? And it got into these boxes. We kept it in the lower cupboard and we had one mouse that somehow found its way into the back of our cupboard through the, the plumbing line. So we ended up sealing that, no big deal. But what they do is they can get into these pasta boxes. So I always, I always suggest that you store your pasta higher or encase these in even another plastic bag or a plastic container. That's just a little tip. Okay, now we're gonna wait. I'm gonna squish this around. All right, we're gonna drain once. And do it again. And then we're also gonna get our uh, pasta, a little thing to stir it with. Let's use this one, okay. So we're gonna give this a little stir. Because pasta will sometimes sink to the bottom of the pan and then it'll stick. We don't want that to happen. All right. Also, I am going to put a pinch of salt in. I do you normally do this, but I just want this pasta salad to have a lot of flavor. So I'm just going to add like 
I'm gonna do the cup and the hand thing. Just some salt, that'll break up. Again, I use the larger coarse sea salt. All right. that's good we're going to wait on that now we're going to go to the next longest thing that needs to happen while well, our spinach is finishing up good we're making good time but we don't need to be rushed okay good two minutes is done let's give this pasta a stir all right now we're going to add our soft shells our medium sized shells and then we're going to put the timer on for nine minutes did you say soft shells because we yeah. had soft shell crabs yeah. last night? We had a soft shell crab last night. Okay, we went out to a fancy dinner. I don't mind telling these funny little stories about my life. It's our life. Um, we went out to a fancy dinner where you got about two bites to eat for a lot of money. It was very good, so you know we're not going to complain too much. But um, we had a soft shell crab that was like about the size of a four people took a little bite of it and that was like the size of a silver dollar maybe <laughs> it was the smallest thing in the world so anyways whatever so so this is parsley this is flat leaf parsley sometimes people call it straight parsley um it's not the curly parsley i'm not sure if this is italian parsley because some people call it that too i think um i get confused between this and the curly as far as which one's Italian or not. This smells so fresh. Smells so good. This is what they use in Greek cooking, like for, um, or Mediterranean cooking for like um, tabbouleh, the salad I, I like. It's all parsley and onions and tomatoes. So I'm going to take this whole thing. You don't need to be picky about this, okay? You, first of all, you look at it again, making sure everything's clean. This looks really nice. I'll rinse it just to be sure. I give it a little rinse and a shake. Okay, good. Rinse and a shake. Okay, did I put that timer on? Yeah. I did? No, I didn't. No. Okay, so we're going to take this whole thing, and we're not going to go through each and every limb and, um, break off all the pieces of parsley because this is a soft stem vegetable so you can go like this and crunch it apart like this use just brute strength or you can cut it with a knife i just wanted to be to impress you with my strength so i just do my hands <laughs> like that okay so now you're going to chop 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 you're going to mill this parsley when i was working in a restaurant the same german restaurant i used to have to chop the parsley that they sprinkled on all of their dishes and I had to chop a lot of parsley. And then uh, it, and I was like oh, getting so frustrated with like getting the nice little soft, soft, little light little pieces of parsley. So what they did was they milled it, milled it. So that's when you put the knife down, one hand here holding it in place and you just move this around in like a half circle. And you just mill it. It takes a little while to, cut, to chop parsley. Oh yeah, before I continue with this, let's um, do our spinach. My spinach has been run out of the water the second time. Okay, this is fine. I'm gonna bring this right over to the, the towel. And then we're gonna take this and put the lid on. This is my small salad spinner. In the olden days, women used to cut, put all this lettuce and stuff in a towel and like swing it around and use centrifugal force to make all the water come away from the lettuce. They literally used to swing it around like that. So we have these beautiful things called salad spinners. It's gonna do the same thing, but this way, okay? So this was a pumper, so I pump up and down. And then it has a little break. And that's good, good. So we're going to use this whole thing, so I don't want to really worry about getting all the water off. We've got most of it off, though. You'll see why in a minute. So there's our spinach. Put this over here. 
give us a rinse. Believe it or not, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's really important to clean your the vegetable, the items you use to handle vegetables in. Because this is gonna sound strange, it was when the first time I heard it, but vegetables actually can carry a lot of bacteria. Sometimes the same as, if not more, than meat. And like my stepfather had um, some a surgery or a heart problem a long time ago, and the first thing they told him was, you can't eat any vegetables, any dark greens. Um, There's a whole list of vegetables he wasn't allowed to eat because there's a possibility that it would carry bacteria that would go through his body and get to his heart. So it was really interesting. I, I always thought of vegetables as being like almost bacteria free compared to meat. But no, there's a lot of there's a lot of bacteria on vegetables. Oh, you can really smell that parsley. Isn't it so fragrant? Very fragrant it's fresh. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Good. So now what we're going to do, I'm just doing a rough chop on this parsley. I don't need it to be super fine. I'm not garnishing dishes. I'm using this as a part of the salad. Alright. So I'm gonna rinse my hands and my knife. This is a beautiful salad. Um, and we're going to take, use, um, I'm going to get a bigger bowl. I'm going to get my big metal bowl. What's that? Bowl. Okay. This bowl is a little bit bigger and a little bit more durable for mixing. It's a, a stainless steel mixing bowl. This bowl is lovely for storing. It's a Tupperware, the modern day Tupperware, because um, it has like a sealed lining. The plastic isn't like porous. It's very shiny, and it's very smooth, and it, it like really keeps everything nice and it doesn't become, you know, it doesn't smell, it doesn't contain the food bacteria. It's a nice product, but I'm gonna use that for storage later. I'm gonna use this for mixing now. So I'm gonna take, half of this parsley and put it in my bowl, okay? I'm gonna take half of this spinach and put it in my bowl for now. We're gonna do like a layered, like almost a trifle, and then we're gonna mix, layer it again. Okay. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna set that aside. So our cucumbers. So we have a bowl with just all this green stuff. That's so lovely. Nice. Okay. Those are cucumbers. I usually don't buy these anymore, but I thought they were so pretty. I got caught in the trap of like things being beautiful. They do taste good in a salad. Um, this small cucumber, I don't know where it's made. Cool. Um, they used to be, in this is Canada, but um, they used to be like English cucumbers and there's the long skinny cucumbers and then there's the regular big fat cucumbers and then there's the shorter pickle cucumbers. I like these for salad because they have a little bit of a bitter taste to them for some reason. Um, the bigger ones are more mild. These ones have a, like, a, like a little bit of an intense cucumber flavor if you can believe that or not. Um, I guess you have to eat a lot of different kinds of vegetables in order to really know the difference. So I'm going to take these cucumbers, splash them under water. All right. Time check, 518, good. All right, we're doing really well. Good, let me give this pasta a little stir just to make sure. Good, nothing's sticking. Lovely. Okay, now chopping these cucumbers. We want them to look pretty, so here's what you do. You take the cucumber and you just take a potato peeler and you just make strips. One, I used to do this all the time in restaurants. They used to always make us do this, but I also would love to just sit in the corner of a business someday and just carve vegetables. That'd be like the perfect job for me. Now you could eat all the skin on these, but we're just making like a pattern for when we cut it. These small cucumbers, beware, okay? They rot really fast. So if you leave these in your refrigerator, like if I leave this probably for 
today's Friday. If I leave them and don't eat them, by Sunday night they'll be soft and they won't be work workable. Okay. So I'm going to be eating a lot of them. So where's my knife? Okay. Chop, chop. So then you take your ends off on both sides. I'll show you. All right. Like this. Okay. And then I'm going to cut them in half so that they're moons. Like this. Okay. I'm going to line them up on my board. All four of them, hopefully, can fit on this little chopping board I have right now. Oops, face it down, all in the same relative curve. All right, then we're just going to chop them all. One, two, I'll show you the results. Get these beautiful half moons like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right into your salad bowl. Boom. Okay. good time so this is like the best salad I can already tell okay. I could have made these a little bit thinner but I don't like thin slices of cucumber because I feel like they disintegrate faster I can add more cucumber later as needed all right now this recipe does not call for this but I'm gonna, oops, time to test the pasta. The beeper went off, so I'm gonna take one piece. I'll take one of the, one of each. Cool it down a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, perfect. Done. Okay, so. Yeah, you want it to be al dente. You do not want it to be soft and squishy. All right, mitts. Here's what you do with this pasta. So as soon as you empty pasta, what happens is a lot of people will throw it into a container and not think about it. But you do that, and all your pasta is gonna they'll strain it and they'll leave it. All your pasta is gonna stick together. You don't want that. That's a, a mess. So you're gonna take your very carefully. And if there's anybody in the kitchen, and you're walking behind them. You say behind. Okay. You go over to your strainer. You dump it into your strainer. And then once it's in the strainer, okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna dump it back in the pan. Okay, and you're gonna apply a little bit of olive oil and give it a stir. Because that's going to keep that macaroni or that pasta separated from itself so it's not going to stick I'm going to show you guys in a minute in the at the other other camera so that's going to help that not to stick all right we're going to leave that warm we I don't want to you can stop the cooking by putting it in cold water and that's fine too but I actually want to leave that warm because when I add it to the ingredients, if there's just a tiny bit of heat to it, it's gonna like bloom all the flavor from that spinach and parsley and everything else. So if you can see, the pasta is in the pan, it's warm, and there's a little olive oil attached to it now, okay? Okay, good, beautiful. Pan lids are clean because they've only been used for boiling water. All right, now, the recipe does not call for garlic, but I'm going to add some because I like a little bite. I like a little sharp raw garlic taste to my to my um, meal. I don't want it to be too crazy. Just a few cloves. Okay. Smash them. Smash them. Peel them. You guys have seen me do this enough now. Peel them. You're always going to get one little ornery guy that's going to be a little bit tougher to peel than the others for some reason. Okay. And then. Okay. 
Okay, cut off the tough end where it connects to the clove column or neck, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I just make stuff up sometimes, you know. <laughs> no, that's good. Uh -huh. um, there you go. So then you chop that up. Milling. Yeah. There's these, all these really great kitchen gadgets out there, guys. I was always interested in getting one of those, um, what you call it, smashers. Like, you just take this thing and you push down on the head of garlic and it smashes them. And it makes it come out, these little holes, and then you get, like, this pulp. Could you use a food processor for this? If you wanted to, but no, you just need some chunks. It's okay. okay. So we're going to take those garlic chunks. I don't know if you can see them. And add them right in there. Okay, now the rest of this stuff is all adding in. So we got a few things to do. Oh, one more chop. 20 minutes. Okay, so we got lots of time. One more chop. Oh, the beautiful tomato. Patrick was the tomato picker outer. He's really, he's really the tomato guy. He loves tomatoes. I do like tomatoes. He grows tomatoes. Not this year. Not this year, but in the past. So, your knife has to be sharp, or else you have to use a serrated blade. Um, so what I like to do is, I check. I let. I make a here. Let me show you. I do a little poke in case my knife isn't sharp. Poke, and then that. Then you ease your knife right into that little poke. Okay, that's the easiest way to start so a tomato. Pierce the tough skin. First. Yeah, pierce the skin, and then. Go in with the flat of your blade. Now, I'm not going to cut out all those little top parts. We're just going to chop this, rough chop it. Okay, it doesn't have to be pretty for this. Okay, now you can buy grape tomatoes if you wanted the whole tomatoes. Um, you know, small grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, whatever tomato of your preference. These are nice, and I never like waste that good tomato juice. There's actually fancy pants chefs out there. What they do is they uh, they call that tomato, what they call it, the essence of the tomato, I forget. There's a fancy name. And they actually make um, cocktails and dessert foams and flavoring, flavorings just with that juice that comes out of a tomato. Mm. It's really cool. And what I like to do is I like to put tomatoes such as this and chop them into you know, little pieces like this, you know, and then I put them in a bowl with olive oil and a little tiny pinch of salt and pepper. And then I, the salt, salt causes the vegetable to break down a little bit and, and all the liquid will come out. And then you get like this beautiful, like almost tomato cold soup. It's good with parsley. Yes. It's good with uh, oregano. Time. It's good with basil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I did here is I cut slices of tomatoes. And then I take some of those slices and I cut those in half. And so you get a nice little, you know, a nice little bite-sized piece of tomato like that. And we're going to put those right in there. Now, we don't have all of the tomatoes in there now. This is good enough for now. I'm going to rinse this. We'll put more in there later. All right. So the chop chop part is done. We're gonna open a can of garbanzo beans. Chickpeas, they're called too. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there. There you go, garbanzo beans or chickpeas. You can get these just everywhere usually. For some reason there was like a shortage of them for a while. So it depends on where you're chopping. If you can't usually find them in one place, you're gonna find them in another place. Oh, pasta. Need that. <laughs> All right. Take our handy dandy can opener. Oxo is the brand to use. They make the best can openers. Okay. I always clean my can opener later. I just do a little rinse. Because again, bacteria. Okay. We're going to take the little mini strainer that I own, we own, 
Okay, and this is perfect for beans, and we're going to strain out the juice from the beans. Rinse and recycle later for that can. Get as much juice as you can. And then we're going to put that right into the, the pot. Okay. Now I'm going to show you this pot in a minute. We're almost there, guys. Oh my goodness. So much fun. And then salami. Now I could do this all vegetable, right? I can make this totally vegetarian, but there's still that, still that cold spring winter feeling inside me that just needs a little bit of meat. And as the summer goes on, that'll change. That's a little bit too much. So what I do is I take like a few slices of this salami. This is Hormel brand. This is um, has peppercorn in it and I roll it, okay? I roll it up with my fingers. Just like that. And then I take my kitchen shears right here. And then I'm gonna slice it. I'm just gonna start snipping it. So this salami is cut, was pre-cut. And it was actually, it's a thick. It's a little bit on the thicker side. So I am not going to make great big pieces of it because it's thick. And salami has a lot of flavor, okay? It really does. If you just, it's, there's a lot of salt, there's a lot of fat. In this case, there's pepper. So you really don't need gigantic pieces of meat in this salad. You just need some to flavor. We are so close to being done. Okay, there we go. So sometimes this takes a while. I'm scissoring it because I could chop it on the cutting board, but I just don't feel like I get as much the way I want it to be on the cutting board. Plus it also makes a mess. And then after a while, what you can do is you can just, I'm gonna put these greasy things in the sink and you can just tear this. It starts to get annoying with the scissors, especially if your hands become greasy with the oil from the meat. So I just tear it. No big deal. Tear, tear, tear. We were given fingers. Terra by terra. Yeah, Tara by Tara. That's the name of my business, our business, actually. Um, the, there's a reason we have fingers, and our fingers are really good tools. So there we go, we'll break up some of these longer pieces. Again, we want that really good mouth feel. We, we do not want one thing to take over everything. All right, so let me just um, wash my hands. I'll just take a second or two. Now, when you're in a professional kitchen, if you're in a professional kitchen, you know, you have to wash your hands for a good 30 seconds, I believe. Um, every time you touch anything else, anytime you go to the bathroom, everything. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to add our pasta. Good. Warm pasta. Woo, nice. Olive oil there. All right, all right. We're gonna give this an initial toss. We're gonna to add something else, a few other things. Actually, we can just add it. We should just add it. Okay, the other things we're gonna add. This is fun. I couldn't find fresh basil for some reason. So I found this basil that's like semi-dried basil, which is very nice. There looks to be a lot in there. So, mmm, smells good. Smell it. Oh, well, I can smell it from here. So I'm gonna add some hot, some fresh, some dry basil right to that hot pasta. I'm not gonna add the whole thing because I feel like it's gonna be too much. Okay, then we're gonna add some organic pine nuts. And I just picked them, they were only pine nuts. They're organic, so I guess they're good. Okay, so we're just gonna add some half of these. A good lively sprinkle. And that's gonna give us a little crunch. And I taste of these. And it tastes very much like, almost like a raw peanut. Like it's nutty, but it's also, um, it doesn't taste like you expect it. Um, and then we're gonna add some feta. This is Mediterranean, remember? So we're gonna add some cheese. The cheese I choose is feta, which is um, 
my sheep smoked cheese. And then we're just going to add the salty. So we don't want to add too much. Now you can really smell that basil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The steam. You can just add a little bit, like half of that. Okay? That's good. All, a lot of this is to taste. Now, because we're just piling it on, right? The thing that we want to do, you could leave this alone. Just add olive oil, salt, and pepper. That'd be delicious. But we're going to add some restaurant style Italian dressing, which is almost like a golden Italian. This is the kind of Italian you see in restaurants. Um, it's a nice, it's not thin because we still, I'm still in that, like I need a little teeny bit of heaviness, but not too much. We're just going to add a little bit. This is what kills people with salad. We just had this discussion. People think they can eat all the salad in the world and, you know, lose weight. Well, you're not going to lose weight if you use too much dressing. Okay. So you just add a little bit at a time. So we're just going to do one circle. That would probably be about for this amount in this big bowl. Look at this bowl. It's gorgeous. Okay. Gorgeous. For this amount, we're just going to probably add, I'll get a measuring cup. So here's a whole cup. We're going to add like one third of a cup. Yeah, about one third of a cup. That's like one third of a cup, okay? No big deal. If you need to add more, you can later. We're gonna add that in. Then we're gonna take our immaculately clean hands and we're gonna mix this. Actually, I'm just gonna take my, my spoon. And I'm gonna start to mix this up. Oh yeah. It's beautiful. Okay, we're almost there, and then guess what happens next? Patrick, can you take a guess? I need, I get to eat. Yes, Patrick gets starved. to eat. I've starved, he's my, he's my partner, and he's my, um, you know, he's my, my other half in all of these productions, so he gets to eat all of the production, all the things we make. That looks really good. And I starved him all day. I said he couldn't eat no. any. No. <laughs> I'm joking. I just knew we were going to have a bunch of I'm pasta joking. salad, so I didn't eat that much. Yes, yeah, so let's do this pasta salad in a beautiful ceramic vessel. No, no, I don't like that vessel. No, we'll just do it in a beautiful white vessel so everybody can see what it looks like. It's important that you pick out the right vessel to eat out of. So if I put it in a brown vessel, it's not necessarily going to look as good as if I put it into a white vessel. That's a lot of leaves in there. Yeah, that's good for him though. Okay, some meats, some cucumbers. All right. Dear sir, would you prefer a spoon or a fork? Let's do, give you a spoon. Spoon's good. Okay, see how he likes it. Yes. Try to get a little bit of everything here. Mmm. Good. Mmm. Crunchy. Mm -hmm. Got a cucumber. Yeah. I think it's Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Try. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to put in here. No, you got your cheese. Okay. Yeah, you got everything. Okay. Oh, it was the leftover green onions I had. Oh. Uh, I'll get those later. Okay, anyways. All right. Let's Tara try it. Ooh. And I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Mmm. Mmm. That is very good. Now, I'm going to give you a pointer. Uh, me a pointer. Individually, when you serve yourself this, I... Might need another little little teeny bit of dressing. Yeah, I could have used a little bit more dressing. But I'm not gonna add it to the whole thing. And if you are one to like more onion, you could add some scallions, or you could, if you want more acid, you could add some lemon juice or some citrus, which I might do to mine later. So that's totally up to you. I don't need to add salt. I thought to myself, do I need to add salt? I don't think so. What do you think? No. Nah. I don't think mm -hmm. so, especially mm -hmm. with the tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, don't want to eat top of my mouth open. That would just be rude. 
Um, I will. I'll eat when you, <laughs> with your mouth open. Yeah. I just want to say um, thank you to everybody for watching the show. Um, I will be with you for a few more weeks, so it'll be good. You'll get to see more. Um, and also have a very safe and fun um, holiday weekend. Please do not, um, you know, take care of yourself. Look out for other people. Um, you know, just just have fun and be safe. You know, be aware of your surroundings and nourish your body, nourish your soul. Thank you.